CPU has a 5 stage pipeline and runs at 1 GHz frequency. Instruction fetch happens in the first stage of the pipeline. A conditional branch instruction computes the target address and evaluates the condition in the third stage of the pipeline. The processor stops fetching new instructions following a conditional branch until the branch outcome is known. A program executes 10 power 9 instructions out of which 20% are conditional branches. If each instruction takes one cycle to complete on average, the total execution time of the program is. We need to find out the execution time of the program. The clock frequency is given, hence clock time period can be found out. Frequency is the inverse of time period. So the time period is 1 by 10 power 9, which is 10 power minus 9 seconds. We need to find out the total execution time of a program containing some branch instructions. There are 10 power 9 instructions out of which 20% are conditional branches. 20% of these instructions are branches and all are conditional branches. It means remaining 80% are non-branch instructions. If each instruction takes one cycle to complete on average, once the pipe is filled, each instruction takes one cycle to complete on average. It means all the 10 power 9 instructions take one clock cycle, but because of this conditional branches, some of the instructions take some extra cycle to complete. The non-branch instructions take exactly one cycle, but the conditional instructions following these conditional branches take some extra cycles in addition to the one cycle. And how many extra cycles will be taken? Here we are having a five-stage pipeline and given that the conditional branch instruction computes the target address and evaluates the condition in the third stage of the pipeline. Suppose I5 is a conditional branch instruction, the branch target will be evaluated and computed only at the third stage of the pipeline and the processor stops fetching new instructions following a conditional branch until the branch outcome is known. Until the branch outcome is known in the execution state, the next instruction will not be fetched. It means the next instruction will be fetched only in the next clock cycle. So even though these are conditional branches, whether the branch is taken or not, always the next instruction will be fetched in the next clock cycle. After the execution stage of the conditional branch instruction, it means we do not overlap the instructions, we stall the pipeline till the branch target is known. As a result, the following instruction will be processed out in only in three cycles instead of one cycle. So how many extra cycles will be taken? Two cycles. It means if the branch outcome is decided in the third stage of the pipeline, the number of extra cycles required for the following instruction is 3 minus 1, 2. So for all the instructions following these conditional branches, the number of extra cycles required is 2. Hence, the 10 power 9 instructions, all the 10 power 9 instructions take one clock cycle and these much instructions take two cycles extra. 20% of 10 power 9 instructions take two clock cycles extra. And one clock time period is 10 power minus 9 seconds. So the total execution time once the pipe is filled is 10 power 9 into 10 power minus 9 seconds plus 40 by 100 into 10 power 9 into 10 power minus 9 seconds which is 1 plus 0.4, 1.4 seconds. The answer is C.